Hello again, and welcome back to our series on creating chord generators in Reactor. I'm Salamander Anagram, and in this video, I'll begin the creation of a more complex project that will allow you to map any incoming notes into any type of a chord. So to begin, I'm going to create the user interface and the central part of the user interface is going to be an event table that we're going to use to hold all of our data in. So I want to turn the scroll bars off, I'll turn the label off, I'll turn the value off. I want to set the width and height to be 300 pixels by 300 pixels. In the function tab of properties I want to set the size to be 12 by 12. This means we'll have 12 elements by 12 elements for a total of 144 elements inside our table. I want to turn on the grid for both the X and the Y. And finally, we want to set the view type to be equal to 2D color you can do by right clicking in the graph menu and I'm going to turn off the read and write positions so now our event table is ready for use so the columns in this graph are going to represent incoming MIDI notes so the left note leftmost note is note C and I'll just create a quick text label for that and the next column over from there is going to be a C sharp note, etc. And then the rows of this graph are going to be MIDI outputs. So anything that's lit up in the C column will be sent to be a MIDI output when we receive a C note. And those are also going to start at the bottom uh, with a C, and then the C sharp will be directly above that, etc. So what this setup will allow you to do is take any incoming MIDI note and map it to any incoming or any outgoing chord that you want. So you can map the C note to play a C major. You can map the C sharp to play a C major, and that way, um, if the user is trying to play notes that are out of key with a C major, they will be denied. I want to connect a numeric readout to the event table so that it's always active, so that we know what it's doing. And next, I'm going to create a mouse area that I'm going to use to turn on and off the individual elements within the event table going to do the processing for our mouse area with a core cell that's going to receive the X value, the Y value, and any triggers we get from the left mouse button. So the X and Y values are going to range from 0 to 12 and they're going to tell us which part of the grid is being clicked on. We can store those values in latches and we don't need to use them until we receive a new value from our left mouse button. I'll compare the left mouse button to zero. If it's greater than zero, that means we have a new mouse click, and we can use that to trigger our latches. So I'll create a new quick bus and name it trigger. So we want whole numbers for our X and Y values, again, ranging from 0 to 12 here. So I'm going to take the decimal value and subtract it from the incoming X and Ys. Decimal macro is one we created in a Simple Core Macros video a while back, so you can find that. All right, so we just subtract this value. We're left with the integer component of our number. We'll do that with both the X and Y. So the reason we don't want to round here is we don't want to round up. 
we want to find out which grid we're inside and then drop any fractional numbers that we've gone above that. So we can change the range in our mouse area from 0 to 12 for both the x and y's. All right, we also want to make sure these values don't go over 11. I know I've said they range from 0 to 12, but actually the maximum value we want to see is 11. So we'll just clip them, make sure they don't go over 11. A 12, you could theoretically get that value by clicking on the farthest most reach of the mouse area, which would technically be filling in um, the column beyond what we have drawn, if there was one, which there isn't. So we just want to ignore that number and pretend like it's a very high value of 11. All right, so next we can take y and multiply it by 12 and then add the x value. And this is going to give us a range from 0 to 143. And as I mentioned earlier, there's 144 elements within our grid, so this gives us um, one space for each part of the grid. This is going to be an index value that we'll use to read from and write to an array object. Our array wants to have a size of 144 objects, again, and we want to read from it using the index value. So this is going to ask our array object um, whether or not our, we have a value in this grid or not. It's either going to be equal to 0 or 1. And we'll use a logic not value. So if it's equal to 0, we'll set it to 1. If it's equal to 1, we'll set it to 0. And so this will simply toggle the state of whichever section of the grid that we're clicking on. And this wants to only happen when we have a new left button incoming so I'll trigger it using the trigger quick bus and then we'll use that value to both write to our array and also to create an output from our core cell so again this value is going to be equal to either 0 or 1 and we also want outputs for X and Y And next, we can connect this to our event table. So we're getting pretty close to done here. But if you try to click on the grid, you'll see that nothing happens. And this is for a very stupid reason, which is that I have not bothered to set up the mouse area properly yet. So we'll give this a width and a height of 300 pixels each and move it to overlay the multi or sorry the event table and it doesn't really quite link up properly so we can go into the settings and turn off the snap to grid and align it pixel by pixel just move it over to and down to and it should line up perfectly now let's see I'm clicking spaces only this one thing is lighting up and that's because I've got the X and Y disconnected um, over on the right hand side of our core cell here so even though we're doing the math um, those values are staying at zero so I need to connect the X and Y quick buses to their respective outputs and now we see um, the Y seems to be inverted um, I click on the lowermost one and the uppermost one lights up etc and so a quick way to work around this is to go into the mouse area and simply change the maximum value to 0 and the minimum value to 12. And there we go. Now we can light up any square within our grid simply by clicking on it. Could turn it off by clicking on it as well. One remaining irritation is that if you click really quickly, some of the clicks are missed. So I'm clicking really quickly right now. It's not changing very fast. And that's because the double click output is getting triggered instead of the left mouse button. So if we merge the double click and the left button together, then we can get a much better response. Look how much faster that is. All right. 
So what we have here is just the user interface for a chord generator that allows you to trigger any chord with any MIDI note. And we'll set up the actual MIDI processing aspect of this in the next video. This one's getting a bit long. Once again, this is Salamander Anagram, and thank you very much for watching.